Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. And uh, I understand I'm the last one between you and your weekend. So I try to be brief and I hope that I can entertain you a little bit with my talk. So if you can go to the next slide, I'll introduce to you a little bit uh, what the subgroup on semantics uh, is based on. There uh, was a decision by the eHealth network to look a bit, little bit into the strategic direction of semantics for the European uh, Union. And over a year, there was work ongoing on a paper. And in November 2019, that paper was accepted by the eHealth network. And uh, I put the link in here for those of you who are interested, take a look and read through it. In the paper, there is a work program for five years specified, and after that, there will be evaluation if this group will be a permanent uh, group uh, continuing its work. Um, but for now, we have quite an intense um, workload. If you can go to the next slide. The next slide shows you um, a network of groups. It's in the paper, so you don't have to read here in detail, but just to show you, uh, when we looked at the uh, construction of the subgroup, there were so many groups involved and we tried to picture them together. You see that the semantic task force is a very important group for us to work with and uh, we're linking closely uh, with the members of that groups and uh, we're closely working with the EHS network and so on. On the next slide, you can see a little bit about the five-year work program and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. You see that there are different work streams that the subgroup uh, will address. And the idea is to come up with a set of recommendations after the five years. And as I said, there will be an evaluation after four years uh, to, to see if uh, the group should continue afterwards. Uh, as you can see in the second line, the Unicom project is uh, addressed. If you can go back, thank you. Uh, the second line uh, there, there, the Unicom project uh, is, is uh, written on e-prescription and e-dispensation. I'll talk about that in a minute, but first I'll go into the patient summary uh, topic. Next slide, please. So the paper specifies three goals. You saw them as the pink lines on, uh, on that graph just now. And the, uh, the first goal um, really explains where this, uh, this work is going. It's uh, aiming at semantic standardization for all European level. So across projects, across groups. So it's, uh, it's not project specific semantic standardization, but it should look at the overall and bring together the semantic work that's going on in the European Union. And to address this in guidelines, and that's what uh, we're talking about today, and recommendations and a global framework that we are addressing. They should be prescriptive at EU level as much as possible, but need to be adopted and supported by policies at national level. Um, and so therefore uh, it's important to, to see what the implementations in the countries will be. Next slide, please. So the next slide I stole from Eamon from its presentation yesterday. I thought it was a very nice slide showing the guidelines that uh, have been in place and that we're just now working on. You see on the left side, the uh, um, patient summary for unscheduled care release two guideline and then the guideline on e-prescription and e-dispensation in the framework with the overall guideline. On the next slide, you will see the title of what we're working on right now. It's the release three. And as you can see, if you could have a click, there it just says uh, patient summary. So it doesn't say patient summary for unscheduled care anymore. So we're going away from the um, original EPSOS uh, idea. And this should be a, an overall patient summary, a little bit in the idea of the IPS SEM standard, but with more definition specifically for the European Union. Next slide. So I cut from uh, the work that we're doing right now, which is on the conference site and uh, which uh, was published in the first uh, draft in, for the November eHealth Network meeting, and which is still un under uh, construction. A few sections that I think are very important for the Unicom project, but as well for um, the um, other things that we heard um, over the two days. 
So there is much more text now in the release three on terminology and uh, it addresses now preferred code systems. So it's, uh, it picks up the idea of the master value catalog from the EHDSI where code systems are put in place for the actual exchange and they are now addressed in the patient summary guideline. We work very closely with uh, EHDSI, for example, Marta, the previous speaker, is working with us on this. Um, then I would like to point out that uh, the guidelines really look into the long-term perspective of semantics. So it's for semantics, uh, as we heard in, in some of the talks today as well, nothing happens from now to tomorrow, but you need to think in a long-term perspective and therefore addressing uh, this revision, we looked at uh, emerging international standards like the ICD-11, uh, like the inclusion of SNOMED CT, here, the guideline focuses on the GPS to make sure that there is no boundaries for European countries to work with this, or for example, the ICHI for procedures and a new classification coming up. As well, the IDMP uh, suite of standards is uh, addressed in the guidelines, and here's really the uh, close relation to the work of the UNICOM. We see that the SPORE um, uh, uh, results we would really like to reference in the future uh, with the guidelines. Uh, in the last bullet point it says that the member state that wish to engage in cross-border communication will need to use uh, for that communication the preferred coding scheme as described. Um, mapping of course would be an option as well but uh, we would uh, definitely like to aim on a strategic long-term level to go for this uh, preferred code system. Next slide, please. Another important section uh, is the section on the controlled uh, list value set catalog. As I said, this is uh, really aligning with the EHDSI idea to have specific lists. And um, uh, we say that this concept of an agreed selection of set of concepts um, is something that we would like to continue and that it's very necessary to have this um, uh, for the health professionals uh, uh, engaging in the patient summary exchange. So um, these uh, uh, selected concepts form the value set catalog and it's uh, considered essential to evaluate this uh, value set catalog on a regular basis. As you all know, um, standards evolve, there's new things coming up, there's new terms being included, uh, but still for histor historical health data, so there might be content in, in the patient summary that is, uh, has been collected a few years back, uh, the value set catalog should remain a previous version of the code systems uh, in, in a historic archive or in a mapping um, infrastructure or something like that, so that uh, we not only work on the most recent one, but we have uh, like a, a history of, of the code systems included. Next slide. Uh, so the, the uh, controlled uh, list value set catalog section, I'll continue here a little bit. Um, uh, we, we talked a lot about the, the version of a code system to include and we agreed that for the guideline with a strategic purpose we say that it's uh, important to adopt the latest version of the code system. So in case there is an update uh, we would encourage member states to go with this update. But if this is not possible in some countries due to some legal restriction or restriction of resources at least the minimum uh, would be to adopt critical concepts, which we have learned with the COVID pandemic um, are sometimes very important to enable the exchange between countries. We as well acknowledge that looking at the different projects, the different infrastructures, it's probably uh, likely that there will not be the one and only value set catalog like EHDSI, but there might be multiple sources of, uh, of data where um, we would like to see them to go together in a network of value set catalogs to uh, be harmonized and to have one, uh, one um, specific access point which points to all the uh, value set catalogs. This of course has to be uh, set up and, and here of course the results from the projects uh, will play an important role. Next slide. On the next slide, uh, you don't have to read this in detail, I'll just give you an impression on how we work on this. So this is a section 
from the uh, 4.2 section where we go into the specification of uh, the, the data elements that we think are important for the patient summary. Here I picked the, patient, uh, the medication summary because I thought that would be interesting for the Unicom projects. And you see there's a new column, preferred code systems on the very right side. And here, for example, we point out uh, the different sets of code systems, ICD-10 here with OFA codes aligning to EU recommendation, international recommendations from WHO. But as you see for active ingredients list, for example, we have the ATC now, but we really want to go to use the ISO IDMP uh, once uh, results are available. You can see as well that some of the data elements we thought would not be necessary. Uh, all these changes are really made with close consultation of the IPS so that there would be very close alignment with uh, other re regions outside uh, the European Union in implementation. Next slide. Now going back to uh, this picture I showed before, you can see there is inputs of other projects here as well, which we put in at the time we wrote uh, uh, this paper, not really being sure of what these other projects could be. And uh, with the pandemic, uh, next slide, you can see there's uh, things coming up very quickly and uh, in the network of guidelines, uh, already a new one is kind of passed by the EELTS network. You probably all have seen about this. There was a news release about this and you can download at, uh, the link in the news. The proof of vaccination for medical purposes, basic interoperability elements. Here the subgroup on semantics was consulted uh, as well on the data elements uh, for the minimum data set. If you go to the next slide, you can see that in the guideline, we picked uh, the same structure uh, of preferred code system. Uh, we tried to uh, be in line with what we will have in the patient summary guideline. So for example, again, you see the ISO IDMP um, SRS, EU SRS system, uh, and you can see the SPORE and already um, in place a system at the very bottom. We uh, mentioned this as well in that guideline. And this is uh, published now and uh, will be picked up by WHO discussions on an overall international uh, data set guideline. We'll see, of course, ISO IDMP EU implementation might not be the preferred way for all uh, uh, regions of the world, but uh, at least for Europe, we try to stick with this. Next slide. So coming to my last slide, uh, next steps, and uh, I think it's very good, uh, or I very much appreciate being invited to uh, present to the Unicom project uh, this work. Uh, we, we will go into wide uh, consultation on the patient summary guideline draft in March from uh, the subgroup on semantics uh, in order to have it ready for approval by the EF Health Network in June. Uh, we would consolidate uh, the consultation process somewhere in April. So the process will probably be a, a month and a half to take a close look and we would value very much the input of the Unicom uh, experts on, on the guideline as it stands and feedback um, on the details. I just pointed out a very few things, but you want, might want to take a look at the overall thing. The next step then would be that, uh, as you saw in the, in the picture of, uh, uh, with the lines, that we would look at the e-prescription and e-dispensation guideline um, that is already in place too, to see if this needs alignment with, with what we have done with the patient summary guideline. And then we will see if uh, future guidelines are necessary to uh, enrich this framework of guidelines. We are working as well on a wide publication of this once it's there, but um, we need to decide how this could happen with the, the guideline on the vaccine, um, vaccine uh, data elements, of course, uh, was quite uh, well recognized. So we would hope that there would be a way to recognize the other guidelines uh, in the same way. So my message to this group here and uh, to the team working on the Unicom would be that um, we would very much like uh, the Unicom project to give us close input. We already asked uh, project leads from the Unicom to give us uh, an introduction of what's going on, but uh, specifically the guidelines would be of uh, very great interest for us uh, to know. 
what you're doing. And if from the Unicom project uh, there is need to develop another guideline that fits in this overall European uh, framework, uh, we'd be happy to uh, receive your input and discuss if we could uh, work on that together. Thank you very much. That's from my side. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie, uh, for uh, the words. And I think uh, your next steps uh, 